Hello, this is our second look at Exercise 4F. Um, more, another look at loci, basically, with um, complex numbers. Um, it's a bit weird, I'll, I'll grant you that. But once you suss that really all they after is a pretty picture, then you can quite easily draw them and move on. So a summary of what we saw last time. Sometimes you get these kind of expressions where it's a modulus of z um, equal to some number. Um, and sometimes it's got this um, coordinate almost where it's not quite at the centre. So in that case, you get a circle, um, and this one is a, a circle of center 3, 2. I've put it in a bracket. I did show you that sometimes they're written without the bracket, um, in which case you can change both of the numbers. Um, so it's uh, 3, 2, and if, uh, if it's um, in a bracket, you, just, you can just use the numbers. Um, so obviously here, this center is... Well, it's maybe 3, 2, I'm not sure if it is, but there you go. Um, secondly, we had these arguments. So argument, this is z minus 2i. Um, now, it hasn't got a real part here. Usually it does. Um, but this particular one, because it hasn't, you would just go 2 up. Normally it's a bit left or right as well. And it says it's equal to pi by 3. So notice you draw your dotted line. And your angle, pi by 3, I know, is roughly meant to be 60 degrees. doesn't look like 60 degrees that, but as long as you mark it, that's good enough. Um, again, notice each line has been given the imaginary in real life, labeled the axes. Um, so it's a line drawn at an angle of pi by 3 from 0 to 2. So the third type we saw was ones like this. And I describe this as being two circles. It's not really two circles. The proper name for it is perhaps a perpendicular bisector. And we know that we're going to get a perpendicular bisector from the two centers of, this, of these two coordinates. So these two coordinates, if I just mark those on there, now you can see this one is uh, 2, 3. And that seems reasonable because when you do a z minus, I mean, when I did z minus 2i, it went to 2i. When I did z minus 3 plus 2i. So if you do z minus, whatever's in the bracket effectively, um, is what the coordinate is. So if I just do that, z minus 2, that would be a plus 3i. So, yeah. so you can see that is why it's 2, 3. So if I do z minus on this side, it would have to be a minus 4 um, plus 2i. So it's minus 4, 2 is what it is. And there's my two points. And anyway, what you do is you draw a straight line between them. And then the right angle line halfway through is the perpendicular bisector. And it's this, which is the loci, or locus. And so it's a perpendicular bisector between those two points. So let's use that. Show an argand diagram, a set of points satisfying this. Well, as soon as I see this, I think, ah, it's a circle. Z minus 2 equals 3. So in my mind, I need to draw a dot at two and it's going to have notice it's two um, on the real numbers there's no eyes there and it's going to have a radius of three so that radius of three means it goes from effectively up to five and one and goes up to three and down to minus three and i know it's a circle and it says it's equal so that's fine so I'm trying to make it look a bit more like a circle there at the end um, and that's the posh version okay a shade on an argan diagram that sets a point satisfying this. Again, it's a circle. I know it's a circle because it's one of these modulus ones. Um, now, if I think of it as equal to 2, then that will be the circle itself. But it says less than 2, so I think I've got a shade inside the circle. So again, set of axes. Um, if I write that as z minus, it would be 2 minus 3i. Minus and minus is a plus. So now I know it's 2 comma minus 3. 2 comma minus 3. That is my center. What's my radius? 2. Well, well that, it's important that you didn't spot that because that basically means this is 2 across. So it will hit this axis. And it will be a radius 2. It won't hit the top axis, the, um, the real axis. It will just hit the imaginary axis going down. And it says... Uh, less than 2. So I think the locus is anywhere inside that circle. This is the posh version. There you go. Exactly right. Notice they are labelling the real and imaginary axis. So good good uh, if you do the same. Um, sketch the locus of points in the Argan diagram that satisfy this. Now it's an argument one. 
So we know this one's an angle I've got to draw. Um, and this is an angle of 45 degrees, pi by 4. So again, um, it's z minus 3 minus 2i. I think it's the same coordinate as we had just then. So that tells me where to draw it. This 3 comma minus 2. So 3 across 2 down. There it is. And it's an angle of pi by 4 from that point. So I draw my dotted line. And then got pi by 4, which is 45 degrees. So I suppose I need to make sure I show a few things. One of the things I want to show is that coordinate as being 3, comma minus 2. Let's see the posh version. Pretty much what I've drawn. Okay. Sketch the locus of points in the Argand diagram that satisfy this. Well, first of all, look at this. I'm thinking two circles. Do you remember two circles? It's not really two circles. It's really a perpendicular bisector. In fact, both of these are. Um, they are the same question, apart from the first one is equal and the second one is greater than or equal. So if I do A here, um, I need to plot a couple of points. And it's based on the centers. It's This is minus 4i, so I go to plus 4 on here. That's one of them. That's one of my centers. The other one says minus 2i. Well, all I need to do then is plot that point. And of course, because it's minus 2i already, I suppose we just go up to 2i on the imaginary line. So again, really, really technically we should write imaginary and real. So my line that joins them looks like that. And therefore my perpendicular bisector looks like that. And this is the locus. Now B is exactly the same apart from, let's just quickly sketch that again. So at 2 and at 4. This is the imaginary. And this is the real. Now again, we just draw that line. We draw the line that joins them. Now, it can be equal to it. Please, I check that. That means I can draw a solid line. Now, it's further away from the 4 than it is to the other one. So, I think it's got to be on this side of the line. It's further away from the 4 than it is to the line. So, that one looks right, and that one looks right as well. So, I'm happy with those. And I think this is the last example. On a single diagram, illustrate the locus of points that satisfy inequalities. Well, it says the, arg the argument is between 0 and 2 pi by 3. Well, first of all, and the pi by 3 is 60, so this is 120 degrees. So it's actually quite a big angle, that. Um, and it also wants this rule to be, you know, this is a circle, of course. So we've got two things going on over here. I'm going to do it over here. So um, this one says the argument, let's draw a couple of axes. Um, if I write that as the argument of z minus, minus 1 plus i. So I think that's going to be at minus 1, 1. Minus 1, 1. And that, at that point, this is my zero angle. And this is my 2 pi by 3 angle. And it's anywhere in between there. Um, that angle there is 2 pi by 3. Now I've also got to worry about this. It says the um, modulus of z is less than 3. Now I suppose I need to know how far that is away. Just so I can get a feel for whether or not it is more than or less than 3 away. This of course is minus 1 comma 1. And just using a bit of Pythagoras, I've got a triangle from the origin, which is one away and one that way. I reckon by Pythagoras, this is one squared plus one squared, root two away. Now root two is 1.4, so that's not very much at all, actually. So what that tells me is that my line for three, of course this says that the circle is, has a radius of three, is much bigger. So I'm going to draw this quite generously. Oops, I don't know. Not my best circle. I'm going to show three written here. And here. And here. 
hopefully yours will be a bit neater than mine put a minus three down here i've got this one here as well now it needs to be between these two lines and it has to be lower than three i think it's this Draw as much of it as possible so it's within the angles which are quoted and within the circle as well and there it is there's look a bit posh of the mind doesn't it um i think that was the last one nope looks like there's another one um, represent the region defined by this oh right now this is we haven't seen one like this it says the real numbers of some complex number z has got to be less than three if i drew a set of argand diagrams so the real number's got to be less than three. So there's three. It has to be lower than that. So of course this is the real axis. And the imaginary axis has got to be bigger than or equal to two. So it's, well, it can be equal, so I'm going to draw a solid line here. That's two. So I, so I think it is this bit here. Let's see what the posh answer is. Oh, you can't even see what's going on there. Um, I'm not even sure they've done the dotty lines right. I've took, taken that from the textbook. That is more than two, but that one should really be a thick line. And that one, I think they've done it done it slightly wrong. And then this is the, the region which they should have shown. Um, anyway, it's close enough. They've, they've nearly got it right. We're going to do exercise 4F. Um, don't do question 2, it's just a notation I don't like. We might end up doing it, but I don't like the notation, so miss it out for now. And other than that, thank you very much.